this point, I'd like to insert a health warning, a hazard, because I want to briefly mention some speculative issues. First, how big is our universe? Well, we can see this huge range of galaxies out to a distance of uh, uh, 10 or 12 billion light years. There's sort of a horizon around us, but there's no reason to think that's all there is. Just like if you're in the middle of an ocean, you climb the mast of your ship and you see a horizon around you, but you don't necessarily think the ocean finishes just, just beyond your horizon. And the same is probably true in the, univer in the universe. We can't be sure of what happens beyond the horizon, but the expectation is that there is far, far more to our universe. It goes on far further than we can actually see. One reason for that is if we look as far as we can in that direction and in that direction, then conditions look the same to a precision of one part in 100,000. So if it's part of some finite structure, then that structure must be much bigger than the scale we can actually see. But some theories suggest that it goes on even further than that, maybe even so far that all combinatorial options are played out. So there would be uh, um, somewhere else uh, another lecture room with similar people in uh, listening to a lecture. But the distance you have to go to find that replica is hugely greater. It's 10 to the power, 10 to the 200, a huge number. So there's no uh, possibility of, uh, of seeing that replica because uh, it would be far, far beyond the horizon. And moreover, even this isn't all, because what I'm talking about now is the aftermath of our Big Bang. But some theories suspect that there could be other quite separate regions of space-time. One idea is what's called brain worlds, the idea that there could be separate three-dimensional cosmoses embedded in some common four-dimensional substratum. To give an illustration, supposing that you have a whole lot of ants on a sheet of paper, that's their two-dimensional universe, they might be unaware of another uh, population of ants on a parallel sheet of paper. So likewise, there could be another universe just that far away from ours, but if that distance is measured in a fourth spatial dimension and we're imprisoned in our three, we wouldn't know about it. That's one possibility, which some people talk about with a straight face. <laughs> and... Um, this is, a, uh, this is a, a cartoon of an idea which is taken much more seriously called eternal inflation. Uh, we are in some region, shown bo bottom right, but that is just one bubble, as it were, uh, in some infinite hierarchy. So uh, these ideas um, are taken quite seriously, and if there are many Big Bangs, this raises another important question, which is, are the laws of physics the same in all of them? They may be, but it could be that some of the laws of physics depend on how the Big Bang cooled down, and it's different in different ones. And that's very important for the apparent fine-tuning which seems to have been required in order for our universe to exist. And uh, th this is a sort of decision tree that we hope eventually to be able to settle. How many Big Bangs are there? One or many? If there are many, are they all the same in the physical laws governing them, or are, are some of them different? Um, and uh, if... Uh, we have the, the right-hand uh, thing, then we can say that our universe is governed by what we think are universal laws, but are really, as it were, uh, bylaws in our cosmic patch uh, and could be different elsewhere. And we are in a universe that's governed by laws that allow complexity, whereas there could be sterile or stillborn universes uh, uh, which are disconnected from ours. So remember, the, uh, the hazard warning sign is still on. This is still very speculative.